Hello students and welcome back to the Lord of the Iron Kingdoms with me, Professor Castor. Today we'll be actually talking about the Circle Obros and their Wolf Sworn tribes. And all of them, every single one that's ever been documented in our archives, we'll be going over today, including some additional things that uh, seem to be moving around with these guys. And for everybody that does not remember what a wolf sworn is, uh, these guys are a long tradition where, where wolf pelts and go into battle as a, well, more organized version of an army compared to, like, you know, the Tharn or a few other things that the Circle Obros like to use. These guys are long tradition. And, well, I suppose we'll get into more of their lore in a moment. Also, if you guys are enjoying the lore of the Iron Kingdoms, please like, subscribe, let your friends and fellow gamers know about this so we can keep this big old steam train rolling. And please comment as well, because we love seeing comments on our videos, because uh, that helps us kind of figure out which direction that we need to be going. And another a big thank you to Private Your Press for letting us read their phenomenal lore. Also, we will be discussing any Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes in the Wolf Sworn units and solos as we move along. So be sure to listen for that at the end of each of their lore readings. And without further ado, let's begin. We're going to be starting with, of course, the Wolves of Obros, which is their most basic unit type. Circle Wolf Sworn Unit. There's always been those willing to offer strength of arms to the wilderness prophets, and the Circle has used such men and women to guard their territories and serve as agents in remote towns and villages. Families in the dark forest and isolated hills have passed this tradition to their sons and daughters, rugged folk initiated into the secret cabal that further the interest of the druids. These are the Wolves of Orbros, fearless hunting packs that march against the enemies of the Order. In exchange for the fealty, the druids vowed to watch over the wolves' land and families, a significant gesture in the brutal regions beyond civilization. The circle shelters and protects these family lines as a precious commodity, for they produce greater than average number of children who undergo the wilding. Each wolf trains to master the cleft-bladed spear and power-piercing weapon designed to punch through thick hides and armor. Wolves of Orberos must prove their skills with this weapon and demonstrate the ability to survive in the wilds to earn the wolf pelt that marks them as a brother or sister. In times of greater need, the circle bolsters the number of the wolves with recruits lured by offers of coin or other valuables. Such wolves serve more as mercenaries than as dedicated defenders, but they possess the same grit and survival knowledge as all wolves, and many continue to serve after their contracts have ended. Coercing or intimidating individuals into wolves is not unheard of, but the Circle knows such tactics breed resentment, so they prefer volunteers. The lifestyles of the Wolves of Orboros has an undeniable appeal to those who live on the fringes of society and who hunger to belong to some greater cause. And I've gone up against these guys many a time, and those spears are no joke, especially since those guys are all used to fighting in unison, so they can easily take down larger prey than themselves. And also, fighting these guys in the forest like any Orboros army is never a good sign if your guys do not already have some accruement to the wilderness because these guys will come through the trees as if they're not even there. But let's go over the Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes on this unit and then we will go to the unit Chieftain and Standard. Alright, well it appears that some things have changed from the Mark 3 to Mark 4 of the Wolves. Um, although we're going to go over what stays the same, their speed's still 6, their mat is still 6, Defense is still 13, armor is still 13, so pretty high defense keeps these guys alive. Uh, they still have Pathfinder, of course, because they are Oberos. They still have their combined melee attacks. However, it looks like their spear has gotten just one stronger, so they will be stabbing you guys with a Power 10 spear with Powerful Charge attached, which Powerful Charge gives you a plus 2 to your attack rolls as well, giving them a a mat of eight when they're stra stabbing you, so they very rarely miss. But let's go on to their Chieftain and Standards and see what that also adds to their unit. Wolves of Orbros, Chieftain and Standard, Circle Wolf Sworn Command Attachment. 
Expanding wars across Western Morn have forced the wolves to recruit many woodsmen and mercenaries into their ranks, but the core of the identity still remains an ancient and primal brotherhood. Heirs to the oldest rituals and ceremonies, these warriors endure training and customs inextricably connected to the worship of the Devourer Worm. They represent the patron of all predation of the wolf and the great pack hunter totem they revere and emulate. Only the most grizzled and scarred masters of the hunt are entrusted to lead true believers into the wild hunt. Those engaged into the most sacred and blood rites can be recognized by the accompanying totem that represents their vow to take no rest. They track their enemies to the ends of the earth and slaughter them at last. A wild hunt ends only with the death of either the sworn foe or the pack that sent it to bring it down. These skilled killers have touched the essence of wildness and conducted many kills. A feral madness fills their eyes and a coarse timber tinges their voice. Such masters work their wolves into a state of fervored expectation and barely contain bloodlust, so that when they finally attack, they are men no longer, fighting as wild beasts, wielding spears as fangs, and executing fluid movements with unspoken coordination. All wolves are perfectly aware of their place within the pack. And unfortunately, I've never seen a Wolves of Orboros unit without their command attachment. And my goodness, he does get them into a frenzy. But you wouldn't be able to tell. Most of them wear masks, so the only thing you can see is those animalistic eyes they got. So, yeah, be weary because these guys are just as dangerous. But let's figure out what they add to their unit that they are attached to. Alright, the Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes of the Chieftain and Standard. So it appears that they've nerfed this group down a little bit, thank goodness, because these guys could remove a couple Warjacks at once if given the right opportunity. But their stats are pretty much the same. Still a Speed 6, Mat 7, because he's a Chieftain. Um, defense 13, Armor 13. They still have their... Combined arms, as they usually do. Um, appears they removed the Power Swell, which was a once-in-a-game thing that gave them an additional die on Damage Die, which is awful, and it cleared a mini award jacks real quick because you could run a 10-man unit all getting boosted damage rolls. On a POW-10, doesn't seem much, but, you know... And it was, sorry, it wasn't boosted, it was an additional, so these guys charge in with a four dice damage roll on a d10 which is still unfortunate but in the mark 4 they switch that out to vengeance so anytime somebody in their unit is injured during the maintenance phase they get to move 3 inches and slap them or stab them rather not slap them um, unless they slap them with the spear which is which would be more funny to see but they stab them with their spear um, also their standard bearer gives the entire unit a, a plus one to their attack rolls, which brings the standard guys up to a mat seven and the chief up to a mat eight, which on top of their powerful charge, it uh, gets them up to a nine and a 10. So they're very rarely missing anything. Beware elves, only a, <laughs> only a defense of 14 to 16 really doesn't do much when you only need to roll a six. Um, also, the unit is granted rise, so if these guys ever get knocked down for any reason, uh, they can stand up during the maintenance phase, so they don't have to suffer from the you know, standing up or attacking rule as well. So, makes these guys even more voracious in battle. And let's move on to the more elite version of the Wolf Sworn. And we, of course, are talking about the Reeves of Orbros, Circle Wolf Sworn Unit. Among the warriors banded together as the wolf sworn, the most notable hunters inevitably stand apart. These men and women often descend from families living in remote regions who have walked and learned every hidden pass and secret glade of their native hills and forests for countless generations. Parents teach their prodigy to stalk prey and become intimate, intimately familiar with every inch of stream and grove for their survival rests on these essential skills. Becoming a reeve is a mark of distinction requiring instinct, cutting, and expert marksmanship. 
Considering crossbows, antiquated weapons, most of the civilized armies of the Iron Kingdoms have instead adopted booming, smoke-billowing rifles and pistols. Reeves is saying these powder weapons as too noisy for hunting. How can a hunter properly stalk his prey when he reeks of burnt powder and gives away his position with thunder and smoke? What become of rifleman's skill when he exhausts his powder a hundred miles from town? The crossbow is superior weapon for the Reeves' need. They have adapted a powerful design of double crossbows that originate with the Virgi and Kos people of northern Kodor and found regular use centuries ago when those tribes clashed frequently with one another. These powerful double bows can fire a rapid succession before requiring reloading. Reeves prefer to attack by ambushing from deep cover and then falling back to maintain a safe distance from their quarry. Having spent their entire lives tracking and hunting, Reeves are master woodsmen, able to find angles of attack and lines of fire and even the densest brush. I've gone up against these guys a time or two and been pulled uh, pulled a couple of those crossbow quills out of my power armor. Thank goodness I had power armor. These usually clear small units pretty dang quick. Um, are these guys more dangerous than a Kodor Widowmaker? Well, a little bit, but Widowmakers are snipers that can only shoot once from long distances. And these guys, you know, double tap their double crossbows and then they can come in for the kill. Uh, Widowmakers don't have that. So, and these guys have a whole list of other fantastic things that we are going to be reading about. And they're Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes right now. So these guys are stats still basically the same. Uh, speed 6, mat 5, rat 5, defense 13, arm 13. These guys have combined range attack, which always a good thing to have for guys that are specialized marksmen. Uh, these guys also have dual attack as well, so they can shoot with their bows, then hit with their melee on the same action. Uh, their weapons have a range 12. Rate of Fire 2, which is kind of rare for most ranged guys. Um, they also, looks like they lost their Hunter ability in the Mark IV updates. Most likely it's because they have dual attack now, which dual attack that would give them three attacks each as a unit, which would give them 15 attacks total as a five-man unit, or 18 attacks total as a unit with their weapon attachment so or chief and standard attachment so that's probably uh that's probably a balance issue there um also they still have pathfinder of course because they are orboros but let's move on to the to their chief and standard options reeves of orboros chieftain and standard circle wolf sworn command attachment Hunters without compare, the greatest chieftains of the Reeves of Orboros are among the deadliest marksmen to be found in all western Amoran. The Reeves worship aspects of the Devourer Worm that embody their ideals and revere the wolf as their patron totem for its sharp eyes and speed. Chieftains are joined in battle by the standard bearing its personal embodiment of the totem's ideal, often including the pelt of the greatest wolf hunted by their own hand during the ritual ceremony. They bind their tribesmen with them with vows of blood, each company more a warrior cult than a regiment of soldier. Following the silent gestures of their commanding chieftain, Reeves hunt and kill with a single-mindedness of a pack of predatory beasts. The hunters move effortlessly through the heaviest brush, taking aim at their targets in perfect harmony and firing with coordinated discipline that would impress the most punctilious drill sergeant. They reposition after eliminating their targets, each of them reflexively moving to clear lanes of fire for their brothers, with vows of death for those who would oppose the Circle Obros. The Reeves let loose a rain of crossbow bolts upon their enemies before vanishing back into the trackless wilderness they call home. And I've gone up against these guys many a moon as well, just because, well, you don't usually see Reeves without their chieftains, uh, just because they usually always move in packs like that, which makes them even more dangerous as they, as they were. But let's find out the perfect, well, not the perfect, let's find out the Mark III to Mark IV changes between these guys, so we can see what, what updated, what got removed, and what was added. So let's do this. Alrighty, it appears they're... 
Stats have stayed pretty much the same. Speed 6, Matt 6, Rat 6, Defense 13, Armor 13. They still have a dual attack and combined range. Um, it appears that they still maintain their go-around order, which dumps them all into a cover position. And then they get blast damage or blast resistance on top of that as well. And they do not block line of sight, so each of them can shoot through each other as if they weren't there. Is pretty nice. They can do that once a game, which is still awesome. It appears they removed the tactics of war tempered from these guys. Um, I'm not entirely sure how war tempered work. It says if a combined range attack made by models with war tempered misses a model in melee, participating attackers would automatically miss the new target, do not contribute to the attack and damage roll bonus, but still forfeit their attacks. I'm not entirely sure exactly how that would play out or how exactly that is actually played, but since they have dual attack, I imagine that kind of takes up for that with the new rules. Um, and of course, they still don't have Hunter. Not sure why they took that out, but that's just how it is. Um, their new standard bearer still gets them inspiration, giving them all a plus one to their attack rolls, which gets these guys almost up to sniper levels worth of accuracy, so that's great. Um, and then granted rise, these guys also just stand back up if they're knocked down, so and they stand up during maintenance phase, so they're not affected by being knocked down. And of course they always have take up because you, know, you always have to pick up the flag when it falls and get all that stuff. So there we go. Let's move on to the one of the more interesting of the of the Reeves attachments. Well, not attachments, solos. And of course, I'm talking about the Reeve Hunter, Circle Wolfsworn Reeve of Orbros Solo. And this guy is a powerhouse. Well, technically a powerhouse, because he's really good at kind of everything. Many Reeves die at a young age, cut down in battle or torn to pieces by claws and fangs of savage forest creatures. Some of those who survive become legends among their own kind, able to track great beasts to their lairs by following them for miles without being detected. Demonstrating incredible patience, hunters follow in stealth and wait for the right moment to bring their dangerous prey low with just a few carefully aimed bolts. As skilled as they are at hunting animals lurking in the deep woods, they are no less adept to hunting people. Years of service alongside their fellow Reeves have honed their skills into Razor's Edge, and they strike with their murderous accuracy on the battlefield. When the Black Clads muster the Reeves to war, they look to the greatest hunters among them to be their advanced scouts and assassins. Such as the hunters' skill and woodcraft, they can move undetected deep in the enemy territory, striking far in advance of the main assault. While they can remain still when stalking prey, Reeves are experts at the arts of evasion and positioning, and once they attack, they are always in motion. They barely pause to mark their targets before letting loose a flurry of precisely aimed bolts and moving on to find their next quarry. And these guys are super dangerous. Not only do they have advanced deployment and or ambush, they also carry a whole variety of weapons, including the double crossbow they're famed for, as well as a battle blade and a cleft sword. So they've kind of upgraded their arsenal. And then the, since these guys can come out of pretty much anywhere, they make them very dangerous. But let's read the Mark Four to Mark Three changes, or Mark Three to Mark Four changes, because these guys have added a little bit to their arsenals and then changed some things to their arsenals. Alrighty, let's go over their stats first. They still Larry speed six. Um, a mat 6, a rat 7, defense 13, and armor 13. Uh, it appears they possess, with the new one, they possess hunter, which allows them to ignore concealment and cover when making range attacks, which is great. Uh, their leadership has changed, so instead of giving them quick work in the old system, when they, you know, when they killed something with melee, they could take a shot, it actually replaced that with hunter so now he gives all reeves within 10 inches of himself the hunter ability so everybody uh, within 10 inches of him can make attacks ignoring concealment and cover and then of course he loses quick work because i guess they're just removing that because well they all have dual attacks so that kind of makes up for most of that um, but they did remove his quick work but they gave him sniper so now he can automatically inflict one damage point twice so he can deal two damage out so he can you know clear a small base model real quick that doesn't have any health points 
and then he can remove their ability to make a tough roll on him so he can clear guys off the battlefield with a sniper ability uh, but, but he still has sprint so at the end of an activation he destroyed something he can take a run um, his his double crossbow is still a range 12 power 8 as all of them are uh, he still has his battle blade a pow 8 but then his cleft sword is still a weapon master so be very careful with that because he can charge in shoot you twice in the face and then he gets a powerful charge with it so he gets a plus two to the attack roll getting himself up to a mat of eight when he charges in so very dangerous guy he can run in shoot people in the face stab them a couple times then run away whenever they're fa- the victims are falling back into the forest where he is safe So, yeah, he is a a dangerous guy to have to go up against if you can avoid it. And this guy can pop out of any forest around you because he just, he has ambush. So that's how it works. So be on the lookout or, well, I suppose you couldn't really be on the lookout for somebody you don't even know is there. But let's move on. Alrighty, we're going to be talking about one of the more interesting of the Wolf Sworn, the Warp Born Skinwalkers, Circle Wolf Sworn Unit. Some human budlines are carefully nurtured by the black clads with the same care applied to the husbandry of beasts. In the deepest wilds, the druids oversee the remote villages that shelter the most devout of the wolf sworn. Outsiders who stumble upon these isolated communities may initially find themselves welcomed by the people they take to be simple rustic folks, but the, the impression is shattered by nightfall when certain warriors of the village begin to howl, their skin warps, and they hunt down the interlopers like prized game. The druids of the circle carefully choose some among the finest hunters and trackers of each generation to become part of this special breed. In distinct rituals derived from that that transform men into savage warp wolves, the warp-born skinwalkers commit themselves wholly to the circle Oberos. As the agonizing ritual takes hold, their flesh distends and snouts burst forth from their faces. Their skin grows hirsute and their muscles gain strength. Their senses also heightened and they become near perfect hunters, stronger than any human. They wield their massive pole axe with enthusiastic brutality until the battle ends and they resume their mundane forms. And I've gone up against these guys pretty much, I don't want to say every time I've gone up against the circle in some sort of battle, but pretty much every time. And these guys with their hyper regeneration, they pull themselves back together. These guys are unyielding, so they're hard to injure from melee. It's easy to just shoot them off the table if you can, or shoot them off the field, sorry, for a slip. But yeah, these guys are are brutal, and they are a medium-based model, so these guys are, well, they can take a lot of damage and throw out just as much. But let's read the lore on the Warpborn Skinwalker Alpha, and then we will go over the Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes. The Warpborn Skinwalker Alpha, Circle Wolf Sworn Command Attachment. Ravenous and brutal Skinwalker Alphas are fearsome combatants, laying low their enemies before feasting upon them as they die screaming. Those they lead follow without hesitation, knowing that they will find either glorious death or victory in blood and viscera of those who stand against them. Few skinwalkers live long enough to claim their right as alpha, but those who do reign as veterans of years, perhaps decades of battle. They have killed in the name of the worm across the wilderness of western Amorn, hunted great and deadly beasts, and listened to songs praising their scars and valor. Other skinwalkers would not deign to follow a lesser hero, and alphas must stand ready to prove their worth in honorable combat. An alpha meets any challenges to his authority with snapping jaws and primal howls, terrifying for lesser creatures to hear. As he attempts to brutalize the challenger into submission, these constant tests ensure not only the pack respect its leader, but also that he is strong and cunning enough to be worthy of their loyalty. Incited to the edge of savage drillum, the Alpha and his pack wield their massive axes with shocking speed, cutting down all who are near and dare to return their attacks. They slake their bloodthirst upon the gore of their slaughtered foes, rejuvenating themselves without need of respite. Even as their targets fall into mangled ruin, the Alphas are already begun to formulate his pack's next move. And you can definitely tell a warp-born Alpha because that thing is huge. 
and he is definitely a lot older looking than his uh, than his kin that follow him around. So, yeah, this guy is a pretty terrifying, and he is definitely worth it with those axes. Uh, if you can avoid getting into melee with these things, uh, that's probably for the best, because these guys love being in melee. They love being next to you, and they love driving axes and all sorts of things into you. So, best stay back. But let's go over their Mark III to Mark IV changes. Alrighty, Wolfborn Skinwalker's basic model. Uh, they still have their 8 health, which, because they're medium based models, these guys are still awful. Speed 5, they are a giant wolf. I was expecting a little bit faster, but oh well. Uh, still a mat 6, defense 12, arm 16, which is great. Um, however, they still have hyper genera regeneration, so they heal D3 points at the beginning of their, each of their activations, so they start healing themselves. And then they also have Unyielding, which gives them an additional plus two armor against melee attacks. So it gets these guys up to an 18, which is basically a warjack at that point. And yeah. Oh, and these guys also have a pole arm, that giant axe they use. And it's a Mat 6 range 2, POW 13. So it's still pretty dramatic to be hit by. If you can avoid it, if you can avoid these guys in melee, try to take them off from afar, because that's probably your best chance of survival. But let's go over to the Alpha. Alrighty, the Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes on the Alpha. Uh, it appears he still has Hyper Generation, that makes sense, like all the rest of them. He has a mat of 7, so that's a little bit better. It appears they removed Night Hells. Um, the original Night Hells uh, enemy models within 3 couldn't cast spells or give orders. But they, I guess they removed that and they gave them Cleave, which is even more awful because cleave allows you to make another melee attack after you kill one or more models with a melee attack and yeah so you know double up get these guys killing 12 people all at once with a pow 13 or sorry pow 12 attack oh, wait it is a pow 13 all right so pow 13 so their attack damage has gone up with their stuff by one point which is great for them i guess uh, also, they gave them Gang as well, although they still had Gang, which gives you a plus two to your melee attack and damage rolls if you're hitting something that's also within melee of another person in your unit, so that's great. Also, a fun fact, all of these guys were given Pathfinder. So, instead of them being granted Pathfinder by the leader attachment like it was in Mark III, all of them innately just have Pathfinder, so they're no longer restricted by rough terrain or forests when they're running through. So, great. Makes these guys even more dangerous in Mark IV than they were in Mark III. Makes them hit harder, and makes them uh, just way more awful. Also, he still is unyielding like every other Skinwalker, so yeah, just try to keep your distance if at all possible. Let's move on. Alrighty, well, we are going to start talking about the solos and characters. Well, more of the solos and characters of the Wolf Sworn. And we're going to start with the War Wolf. Actually, I had to go find the archive for the War Wolf because, well, when you just see a dog running around by himself, it does make these guys quite interesting. And this guy is a solo, so he can kind of jump around. He's not really attached to anything. He's a semi-wild dog. So, But the War Wolves like him, so let's read about him. The wolves of Orbros consider themselves kin to their namesake. This attitude literally extends to the fighting side by side with half-wild animals and speaking of them as brothers. The hulking beasts kept by the wolves are a stocky mountain breed found in northern Kodor among the Signar and Mormal Mountains. They bring speed, exceptional senses, and raw killing power as their natural asset. The breed chosen by the warriors do not behave as their wilder kin do but neither are they tamed hounds bred for war. They are something in between. Tales passed down from the older families of the wolves or robbers describe the animals hunting alongside mountain men of ancient Mulgar tribes. Perhaps there are some compact made between the ancestors of these men and wolves that bound them together. For reasons not well understood, the wolves immediately recognize the scent of the scions and seek them out. The animals offer themselves to their allies fully, not even begrudging the warriors their pelts. War wolves do not respond to shouted commands, but instead fight on their own initiative. They are cunning creatures, however, and do not need to be told to lie in wait until the spears of the wolves have pinned the enemy to place. They circle and ready and move from behind to take the enemy unaware. 
At the distinctive sound of the Reeves' crossbows, they leap from the trees as a blur of ghostly fur, their fangs bared to tear into tendons and muscles. Yeah, these guys, I have not seen very many of these guys, weirdly enough, and these guys have been with the circle as long as the archives are. I actually had to dig deep to find these, so yeah, and these, they kind of remind me of the Kadoran war dogs that hang out with the warcasters, but these things are definitely not trained, so, well, these things are not trained, more just akin to the fighting styles of the wolf sworn, I assume, after generations, so that's kind of neat. But let's see their Mark III to Mark IV changes. Alrighty, appears their speed is still a 7. Their mat is still a 6. A defense 13, arm 13. Man, that's almost the exact same as the normal wolf sworn. Uh, these guys have gang fighters, so as long as they're within melee range of another unit or faction warrior models, these guys get a plus 2 to their melee and damage rolls. And... They still have the move Sikkim to Wolf Sworn. Well, actually, it's been updated, so it's not just Wolf Sworn. Uh, these guys just have Sikkim, so any time a friendly model uh, hits an enemy attack and this guy is not already engaged, he automatically charges the said model, and he gains boosted attack rolls as long, <laughs> along with his boosted charge damage rolls. So, yeah, he's pretty awesome. Um, this guy also has, still has his tracker ability, which gets this guy to ignore force terrain when he's declaring line of sight for charges, so he just charges right through force terrain. And at a guy who has a mat 6 gang fighter and a POW 11 bite, like this guy can start really amping up his damage output real quick as a solo model attached to any kind of unit. Well, not attached, but working with in tandem with any kind of unit of the Wolf Sworn or in general, so. Yeah, these guys would be fun to have, and I think you can have up to three in a standard army size, but hopefully we see more of these guys in the future, because always having dogs fight along the wolf swarm would be kind of cool. But let's move on. All right, we're going to move on to a character unit, the Death Wolf Circle Wolf Sworn Unit. And any type of character unit usually has a bunch of very interesting aspects and abilities. The wolves of Orboros have long served the Black Lads as foot soldiers, trading fealty to powerful druids in exchange for protection from the wilds. While many wolves have distinguished themselves as mighty warriors, chieftains, and even spiritual leaders, perhaps none boasts the renown or infamy that attend the three dread warriors known as the Death Wolves. The Death Wolves Skull, Tala, and Kalib adhere to more ancient and barbaric forms of devourer worship than their fellows. They are Death Cultists who venerate the enigmatic and horrifying Lord of the Feast, as well as the ancient entity Wormwood. They demonstrate their veneration by ritually consuming the flesh of their enemies and gain strength and vigor. This practice has changed them irrevocably, and they are no longer wholly human, a fact that has compelled them to dwell apart from the wolf clans to which they once belonged. Among the wolf sworn, only the most feral of skinwalkers feel comfortable around them. Although considered pariahs by most of those they once called brothers, the Death Wolves have gained much of their dark mysticism and cannibalistic practices. They draw power from their enemies by ripping out and devouring their still-beating hearts in much the same way as bestial Tharn. Stinking of blood and decaying remains of their recent victims, the Death Wolves stand apart from other wolves of Oberos in other ways beyond their devotion to death and slaughter. Their grim helmets, made from the skulls of greater beasts, their bloodstained armor, and their grisly demeanor all speak of something darker and more primal, recalling a time when the line between man and beast was far less distinct. The Death Wolves are led by the fearsome Skull, a throwback to the savage Mulgar warlord of old. Skull leads by force of will and strength, using his gargantuan axe to hack the enemy into quivering bits. It is relentlessly assault that heralds the arrival of the Death Wolves on the battlefield. Deadly and agile, Tala is the worm's shadow, striking from darkness to cleave skull and slice limb from bodies. Caleb is the most feral of the three, truly more animal than man. His iron claws leave savage wounds like talons of some terrible beast that he rips into his enemies, awash in the gore and primal rage. Despite the gruesome rituals, the Death Wolves are a potent weapon for the Circle Obros. 
The druids send them into battle when they are in need of brutality, effectiveness of combatants, and wish to sow particularly intense terror and discord among their enemies. Weirdly enough, I've fought for a long time and I've never had to fight these guys. And thank goodness, because these guys would terrify most soldiers on the battlefield, because, yeah, they, uh, they eat people. They slice them open, they eat them, they're still alive, still warm, still wet. Yeah, these guys are disturbing in the max for these. And weirdly enough, they're not Tharn. These guys are people, well, humans, basically. So, yeah, yeah, these guys are ooh, creepy. Anyway, let's move on to the Mark 3 to Mark 4 changes. And while we're reading the Mark 3 to Mark 4, let's add to the disturbingness of these guys. So, they are... I'll start by their stats. Uh, they are a speed 6, mat 7, so all of these guys are very good in melee. Uh, defense 14, armor 14, so all these guys are, you know, very defensive. Each of them have their own weapon. Um, so we'll go over the weapon for each one. Uh, but we're going to go over things they all have in common. So all of them have cannibal magic. And a body snatcher. So these guys gain corpse tokens. So anytime they kill somebody, they gain a corpse token. They can have up to three corpse tokens at any time. And they can use those corpse tokens to do cannibal magic. Which they can, anytime anybody exceeds their armor with an attack, they can spend a corpse token and only take one damage. And since these guys already have five damage boxes, that means that these guys can take on some brutal damage if they have bodies on them. Uh, not only that, they have Blood Rage, so they can use bodies to give them additional attacks. And then they also have Meat for the Beast, which allows them to uh, boost attacks or damage rolls as well. Um, each of them also have Overtake, so after they destroy one model, they get to move up to one inch. So they can really take out a full unit of guys, or a couple units of guys actually, pretty quickly. And these guys also all have Prowl which, compared to their original selves, uh, pretty much nothing has changed on their abilities. So they still have Pathfinder, they still have Cannibal Magic, they still have Heart Eater with, with all, their, all their spells, they still have Overtake, and they still have Prowl from their original versions. But let's go over their weapons, shall we? So, Skull has a Headsman Axe, which is a range 2 POW 14 weapon. Not much crazy on there, but still pretty powerful for a small base model at a power 14. Tala has cleft swords and powerful charge, so he has a range 1 POW 12, well, 2 POW 12 cleft swords that he gets a plus 2 to his charge attack rolls as well, get him up to a mat of 9 when he charges, so he's ready to tear apart people. And then Caleb, the more feral of the three has iron claws which are a range one pow 11 double claw that he can also do combo smite with which is the same as his original but combo stack now is just a base plus four so it gets him up to a pow 15 with that as well which can take apart most uh, most small base models that he's trying to eat so yeah these guys like bodies they like blood they like gore they eat people and then they can use those bodies to power themselves up even more, getting them ungodly amounts of attacks. So these guys are definitely like the people they follow, that being Wormwood and Lord of the Feast, who do very similar things with bodies. So yeah, if you have to face these guys in battle, I'm sorry. Um, I'm glad I'm retired, so I will never have to see these guys in battle if I can avoid it. But we must move on. Alrighty, we're going to go on to Wolf Lord Marag. Circle Wolf Sworn Solo. Character. Mareg, or Marag, I, I don't know, I'm going to mispronounce it a lot, is the inheritor of an ancient and proud bloodline that seems to guide him towards some greater reckoning with the past. Even among the most respected elders, huntsmen of the wolves of Orboros, Marag seems larger than life. A man whose voice crackles with the thunder of command. War wolves who barely tolerate the touch of man, gladly bear him into battle and fight to the death to defend him. Morag is a pragmatic warrior, predestined to lead men to war. 
He has little tolerance for mystical talk, shifting uncomfortably in his saddle when black lads schemes and invoke their magic. He has become used to such sights as the warlord of nearly a third of the wolves of Olbros of Western Amoran, but his mind remains rooted to practical matters. Morag was born to the accursed Veshing headlands of Western Kodor, but his stock derives from the Wormwall Mountains. His people trace their ancestry back to the Mulgar, and they have ever served the Circle Oberos. They have uprooted themselves and moved where needed countless times, spreading their prodigy across the entire region. Sometimes he jokes that any wilderness man with a touch of flame in his hair is likely a kinsman. Few among the wolves of Oberos do not recognize him. Elders treat him like a long-lost son. Those fighting years embrace him as brothers, and the young wish their fathers were more like him. Certainly Morag has done more to expand the ranks of Wolves of Orbros than any dozen of his peers. When he enters a snowed in hunter's lodge and shares drinks and stories, half of the able-bodied men present will be put aside old aspirations to join his brotherhood. Though he claimed to talk of destiny as nonsense, he seems to be working hard to prepare the wolves for some coming conflict. His companionable demeanor has gathered around the fire with his brothers in arms, contrast with the utter ferocity and ruthlessness he embodies in war. An uncompromising master, he trains his men until they can no longer stand, often forcing them to march through forests of dead of night as the rain pours down upon their heads. Yet those who follow him know he forges them into burnished weapons, and they take inspiration from seeing him lead the charge against the enemies of Oberos. Few can match his cleft sword, and the enraged wolf beneath him snaps at any who evade his blade's edge. Indeed, the unusual motion of his steed has proven an advantage against more than one adversary expecting to face a horseman's charge. The Wolf Lord has long been obedient to the Druids, but in recent years he has come to view no man as his master, and only a few black clads are worthy of his respect. His ultimate fidelity is to the men that he leads, but on some indistinctive level he knows he marches towards a larger purpose. When Morag first met Kruger, the Storm Lord, a thrill of recognition shot through him. As he clasped the hands of the arrogant druid, something beyond words connected to their stares. Morag took his men into the service of the Stormlord, even as emissaries of the other potents sent polite but increasingly agitated queries. Whether he or Kruger journeys to glory or to ruin, Morag has made his choice, and where he marches an army of wolves of Oberos follows. Yeah, I've again never had to face this guy in battle, but he does remind me of a lot of other leaders of the Orbros that seem to be pulling away from the Blackclads as of present, as if some greater battle is coming up that they need to prepare for, that they can't, you know, go with all the intrigue and all the, you know, fighting, infighting of these guys. But yeah, he is pretty phenomenal and bright red hair as mentioned. But let's go over the Mark III to Mark IV changes. Alrighty, we will start with his stats. He is still a speed 9 while on his horse and a speed, or on his wolf, technically, uh, and a speed 6 off of it. He is a mat 8, uh, defense 14, armor 17 while he's on his wolf, and armor 15 while he's off. So I guess this guy is a dragoon model. So after you get through his first damage mount, uh, then he is dismounted and you get to fight him on foot, which, yeah, is kind of awful regardless. But his abilities, he still has Pathfinder. He still has Cleave. Um, so, af so after he kills one guy, he can hit another. Um, he has Flank Wolf Sworn, which, you know, he has. Uh, he gets a plus two to his attack rolls and then additional damage die while he's attacking with his Wolf Sworn Brethren. Uh, he still has Prowl, so if he's in any kind of concealment, he gets Stealth. Uh, he still has Reposition 5, so that's awesome. Uh, he still has veteran leaders, so he still gives all of the wolf sworn within one, uh, within ten inches of him a plus one to their attack roll. So he can really get these guys amped up. So if you're running a full wolf sworn army, this guy plus all of the all of the command attachments for the wolf sworn gets them a plus two to all their attack rolls. So you can really get a wolf sworn army uh, swinging and never missing. So yeah, and it doesn't. 
appear that anything has been taken from him. Um, because he still has all of his uh, same original moves. Uh, Pierce, we do have some additional things added to him, though. So he has his cleft blade, a mat 8, range 1, 13 blade. Uh, his, his mount does a range 1, pow 12, and then he can also attack with his shield. That gives him an additional plus 2 to his armor. So... His armor is technically a 19 now while mounted and a 17 while not mounted. So this guy is a powerhouse tank. So yeah, this guy is good at killing things. And if you, as long as you have him surrounded by his, uh, by all of his wolf sworn, this guy is probably not going to be going down that easily. So yeah, he is a, a great solo to add to any army if you can. And his models actually look pretty cool and how often do you get a model that has bright red hair like really you don't see too many redheads in this game so yeah hey if you want to go for it go for it it's part of his character alrighty and let's move on to some of the models that have been added per se in the Riot Quest game or the models that were talked about by the Hermit of Hinchhold, the ravings of a potential future of the Iron Kingdom. So, but that means that we get to go through very short descriptions of these guys because there's not very many archives that go through these outside of those very, very short ones. So let's begin with Shivers. And of course, in Riot Quest, they do have some ridiculous, ridiculous characters, and Shivers would be one of those because he is a tiny little Gorax with a knife, but technically a wolf sworn somehow, not entirely sure, but he's, he's part of that group. Shivers is a maniacal little Gorax. He was found by Boom Howler and developed a deep bond with the troll. Uh, try not to get on his bad side. He is fiercely protective and has picked up a trick or two in his renowned fell collar. Um... So this guy, even though he is a technically a wolf sworn, he's not really a wolf sworn. He's not really even a human to begin with. Uh, we do not have any Mark IV changes because he's not really in Mark IV yet. But we do have his Mark III change or Mark III stuff. So this little guy is a speed six, a strength five to eleven, depending on if he's freaking out. Uh, Mat five, rat five, defense twelve, armor sixteen to eighteen, depending on if he's freaking out. And he is given Pathfinder and Tough. Uh, his freak out once per turn. If he's suffered damage from an enemy attack, after the attack is resolved, he gains plus three strength and boosted attack and damage rolls for one round. Getting this guy up to some some astonishingly bad hits for a guy so tiny. Um, he has Mimicry. So, so he can copy animus spells from non-character war beasts in his stuff as long as it has the range of self. So he can actually copy their animuses on himself, which is kind of awful. He has Primal Rage. So after he suffers damage rolls, he can make a full advance towards a model that attacked him and make a melee attack. And then he has Shield Guard so he can protect those people around him, uh, as long as they're within three. His weapons include Bellowing Shout, a range 6, pound 12 attack. It has Defense, so model... Models hit by it suffer a minus two defense and cannot receive orders for one round. He has a tiny sword, which is a pow two. Well, it's a power strength seven or 13, depending on if he's freaking out. And he has critical smite. So if he gets a critical hit, he slams a model D6. So this guy's very powerful. Then he has a tiny shield and it is a pow six or a pow 12, depending on if he's freaking out. And it gives him a plus two armor, which gets him up to an 18 technically. So... Unless somebody has a chain weapon or something like that. Uh, this guy is adorable and dangerous. Um, I'm curious what they're going to do with him in Mark IV when they get that out there. Because this guy is very brutal for his size. I think it was... I think he's almost a joke character a little bit. But it'd be fun to see him on the battlefield in Mark IV. But let's move on to the last of our potential futures in Riot Quest models. And that is the Wolf with No Name. And the wolf with no name is, again, technically a wolf sworn. Uh, he's also a skinwalker and all sorts of fun stuff as well. Uh, for a fistful of crowns, the wolf with no name will join your crew. He is a beast of few words. But for a few crowns more, he'll happily take on whatever rivals throw at him. Good, bad, or ugly. 
And this guy is, of course, another Riot Quest model, so he has a bunch of rules that dedicate for a Riot Quest. But let's see what his Mark III to Mark IV changes are, because weirdly enough, he got into Mark IV, so. And I think they just call him No Name for short. Anyway, he's a rifle toting, wolf sworn, Reeves be damned, if you will. And his stats are a speed 5, strength 6. Uh, Rat went up to a 7, because I guess uh, in Mark IV they decided that it wanted to shoot a little bit better. Uh, defense 13, armor 15, so that's great. Um, he still has advanced deployment. He actually was given ambush, so that makes him even more dangerous. Um, he has a finisher, so he gets an additional die on damaged, or additional die of damage rolls on models that are already damaged. He still has hyper regeneration, so he's got that. Uh, it appears they removed his money is power rule from his Riot Quest version, so I'm not sure if that was just because Riot Quest is on the back burner right now, or or what, or maybe it just made him too powerful in Mark IV, that could also be it. Uh, but for people that are interested in what that was, money is power would give him three loot tokens that he can use to boost attack or damage rolls. So, yeah, that made him very dangerous. But they took that out, but he still has prey. So you can still give him a prey target that he gets plus two to his attack and damage rolls against the prey target. So that's great. Uh, looks like they removed Wanted, which was another ability from the Riot Quest versions, uh, which this model gains a loot token every time he hits his prey target with an attack. I can understand why they removed that. That is just a, an additional boon to this guy because uh, yeah that would make him way too dangerous his weapons include a pig iron rifle range 12 rate of fire 1 pow 12 and then his knife of course is a range well now 1 because we are in mark 4 and they don't have half inch ranges anymore and it's a pow 10 so that is preferable and yeah, this guy actually does some good damage with that, especially if he's hunting his prey target. So he gets him up to a rat of 9 and a POW 14 hunting his prey targets. Very dangerous, glad to see this guy in Mark IV. I can't imagine what the Reeves think of him since he's not using a crossbow. He is using a large, <laughs> large, very loud gun, which makes that very funny. But I've never seen this guy on the battlefield, so I can't reference him too much as what I've seen of him last but if you guys have ever played this guy in the battlefield or played with him please comment below let me know how he ran and let me know how any of models ran that I've not had the pleasure of going against but it appears that that is every wolf sworn model in Circle Oberos so that will conclude this particular course thank you guys so much for listening and if you haven't already please like subscribe comment let me know how i'm doing let me know if you have any cool stories about some of your battles with some of these fantastic models on the field and tell your friends fellow gamers about this let's keep this train rolling another thank you again to privateer press for letting us read their phenomenal lore and as always class dismissed <laughs>